Good morning. Day 277. Cooking down the refrigerator, freezer, and working pantry meals. So I've stacked way up on produce now. I have enough for the stash. I plan on um, freezing some of it since I got that new little freezer. And all this lovely produce is coming around now. I figured I might as well start using it. So within the next day or two, I'll put my avocados in there and uh, probably start bringing some food back from my mom's. I don't know if it'll all fit because the freezer where the food is now at my mom's house is bigger than my little five cubic foot freezer. But my kitchen freezer, um, if I just wanted to shop every week and not preserve any food, that would be great. It would be a good size and I wouldn't have to have a second freezer. But since I do like to uh, prepare food ahead of time, um, a second freezer, a small one, uh, I think will come in handy. Because sometimes you want to freeze things flat on a cookie sheet or, you know, you want to put a couple bags of flour or something in there uh, for long-term storage. Leave it in there for 24 hours <clears throat> and before you store it. And I can't do that with just my kitchen freezer. So the last couple days, I've kind of had this frog in my throat. It's, I think it's the season where uh, allergies start to kick up. Uh, things that are on the ground are starting to uh, mold. So, um, you know, it irritates your membranes. So, hopefully that's all it is. I don't feel like I'm getting a cold or anything like that. It's, it's just, uh, and I don't have a sore throat. But it's just, I'm kind of froggy. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. So, um, anyway, today my son is coming over and hopefully we'll get all that mulch done. And uh, because for the next week it's only going to be in the 60s. So it's uh, really gotten chilly here. And I hope that's not a... Um, a sign that we're going to have a very cold winter. And also next week we have a couple days where it's going to rain. We didn't have a ton of rain this summer. It was nice. It was enough so that everything wasn't parched. But um, we didn't have a lot of rain during the summer, which, which was good. But then I had to water, so that wasn't good. But anyway, everything has its trade-offs. So today I don't have to cook because um, I made all those veggies ahead of time. And uh, I'll probably just put on some pasta and uh, call that good. But I have to see what's for breakfast. And I have lots of food for that too. So anyway, we'll come back in a little bit, and we'll take a look in the fridge, we'll take a look in the garden, and see what the day has in store. All right, I will be back with you shortly. So this morning, it's so chilly in the house, it's only 66 degrees, that I turned on my little faux fireplace. And I like to use this when the weather transitions. Um, I have a couple of little electric heaters that I just turn on in the morning to take the chill out of my house. So yeah, I wasn't expecting September is usually not this cold. So I wasn't expecting this. Usually by October this happens. So anyway, it adds a little ambiance to my um, to my house and uh, <clears throat> this fireplace. <clears throat> there goes that frog again. This fireplace actually has a metal box and I have, um, you, you can burn like the little sterno um, 
cups in here. You can burn like three of them. So it's one of the things that I have for prepping in case the um, heat is out in the winter. So it won't keep the whole room warm, but um, so. I wish I had a real fireplace, but it was an option when I built this house, but it was even more expensive and I was already at my limit, so uh, I kind of regret not putting one in, but well, anyway, uh, this will do, and I like this. All right, just wanted to show you my little fireplace. Well, let's see what's for breakfast this morning. <clears throat> Oh, I have so many choices. I think I'm going to take some of my homemade syrup here. And I want to keep it simple, but I want something warm. So over here, I have some almond milk that I need to use and I think <clears throat> I'll have an egg and This morning, I think I'm going to go over here <laughs> Coffee Gnome and I'm going to have some oatmeal and I really really am enjoying the way this open shelving turned out. I'm really liking it. All right, I will meet you at the stove. Well, I'm going to make my oatmeal just in a bowl in the microwave because that's how I do it. Okay, I'm just going to make a real quick bowl of oatmeal here. I have oatmeal, almond milk, use whatever milk you like. I have cinnamon, I have vanilla, I have a well-beaten egg. So I'm finding that by having the open shelving, that I'm using things like beans and oatmeal and rice uh, more because I don't have to go somewhere else and get them out. So I'm putting about oh, three or four tablespoons of oatmeal in my bowl. <laughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. So I have two packets of this Whole Earth Stevia and Monk Fruit Sweetener. So in that goes. And I'm going to put a good dash of cinnamon in there. And this would be great with one of my apples too. But, I'm going to use my homemade syrup, I'm going to drizzle that over the top when it's done. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to add some uh, almond milk, and if you have the vanilla almond milk, that would be good. You could put some coffee creamer in here for extra creaminess and flavor. But I want to use up this almond milk. And 
that's I don't make my oatmeal with water. I always make it with milk. And then, but you have to watch it when you put it in the microwave. You have to keep an eye on it because it will puff up and boil over. And then I'm going to add a splash of vanilla too. And then you'll have a big mess in your microwave. Now of course you can do this on the stove top too if you don't have a microwave. I know some people don't like them. I use mine all the time. I even steam veggies in there. I have a microwave veggie steam steamer. You guys have seen me use it. So I'm not going to do anything with the egg yet, but I'm going to put this in the microwave for um, about two minutes, and then I'm going to see if it's done. But like I said, keep an eye on it. I'll be back. Okay, be very careful because the bowl is hot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this hot oatmeal into this egg mixture and stir it up right away. It'll keep the egg from, um, you know, clumping up. And it'll make it nice and smooth. And this will add a little bit of extra protein to your oatmeal. And then I'm going to stick this back in the microwave for another minute. Let's see how nice that is. Alright, now I'm going to stick the egg back into the oatmeal. And this makes makes it really creamy and delicious. Um, you can put this in uh, cream of wheat, cream of rice, um, any hot cereal that you like. You can make this way. Alright, I'm going to give this another minute. I'll be back. Okay, so be very, very careful taking this out. All right. Now, I don't measure my milk. I just kind of go by what I think is the right amount. Now, this is a little too thick. So when it's done cooking, I just add a little more milk. And it all depends on, you know, how thick you like your oatmeal. There's really no big measurements here, but I don't measure much anyway. You guys know that. So just a little bit more. And this actually used up quite a bit of this almond milk. And this is shelf stable and I've you know said before I keep it even though it's shelf stable I have a stash of it in my uh, refrigerator uh, down the basement and uh, <clears throat> I find it lasts a little longer that way okay so here is my nice creamy oatmeal and I'm going to add just a little bit of my homemade syrup to it, just for some berry flavor. Now this would be really good with some chopped up apple or um, pears, peaches, you know, any, any fruit you have would be delicious. Okay. So this is a pretty thick syrup. It would be great for pancakes. Mm. And it's so tasty. I made this the other day from some produce I had gotten. So, but I don't imagine it's going to last a real long time. And I don't want it to get moldy. 
I can also make some chia jam out of this by adding some chia seeds, and I think I might do that. Um, it'll thicken it up in the refrigerator. Or I can add the chia seeds and then freeze it. So I might go ahead and do that. <clears throat> oh, that feels so good. So there is my bowl of oatmeal. Picture time. Easy peasy breakfast. Very healthy and delicious. So let me give this a taste. Hot, hot, hot. Mm. That is so good. <laughs> All right. I'll be back after I eat my breakfast, and we'll see what else I'm up to today. I'm always up to something. All right, I'm back. Meet you back here. I have a lot of eggshells here, and this isn't even the half of it that I've been gathering. Um, and in here, I have very finely ground eggshells. Now the way I do my eggshells, this will go in my garden in the spring, and I'll have quite a bit by then. But the way I do my eggshells is I just wash them, uh, like this morning from the egg. I just wash them, clean out the inside, let them dry, and then I just crumble them into um, this little bowl and I let this go too long but I try and um, break it up as much as I can so and then I just have this little um, ninja blender that I've had for years and I actually have another similar one that came from Aldi's um, that um, they both do the same thing. Actually, they look alike. One's black, one's green. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I decided to keep this one just for powdering eggs and, um, and dried banana peels. So I can make fertilizer for my uh, plants. So I'm just going to blend some of this up just to get it off my counter. And don't put too much in your in your blender because it'll have to work too hard. But anyway, it's that easy. And then I just pour them in here, and uh, you have a cheap fertilizer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and blend this up, and then I'll be back. But this is going to be really loud. So here's how much I have in here. And this is all, it gets scratched up and powdery. And that's why I'm dedicating this particular blender for this process. The other one I use for my food. So I'll be back as soon as I get this ground up. Now I find the best way to do this is to pulse it like this because sometimes little pieces get stuck in between so then just give it a shake this is actually hard on the blender but and then when you take the lid off be careful try not to inhale all those ground up eggshells I'm sure that's not good for your lungs so let it settle a minute and then uh, you can grind up some more. See all that powder? See it all? Yeah, you don't want to breathe that in. So, okay, that's how I make my eggshells and what I do with them and um, I actually have a whole little compost 
a kitchen compost container full of eggshells that I need to do too. So, but I wanted to get these off my counter and this makes it much easier for the plants to um, get the nutrients out of here because eggshells take quite a while to break down and I can also feed this to my worms because um, I sometimes feed them coffee grounds and eggshells. Um, they say to even put dirt in there for them, but uh, I don't know what's in the dirt, so I don't do that. But sometimes I do give them eggshells and um, banana peels. So I'm going to go ahead and grind this up, so save your eggshells. And if you don't have a grinder, um, you can use a, a mortar and pestle, um, that would work, or a rolling pin, anything to crush them. All right, I'll be back later. Who knows what I'll be doing? I'm sure it'll be something. I have to get out in the garden and do doggy duty. Um, but I see that the wind is blowing again, and it's only like 60. So I was hoping it was going to be a little warmer and sunnier today, but I'll have to put on my sweatsuit. All right. So I forgot to mention, before you grind your eggshells, make sure they're very dry. So I let mine sit a, a few days in my little container before I actually, I mean, you can smash them up with your fingers right away if you want, but before I put them in the blender, they have to be dry. And then I've never had a problem with, you know, mold or mildew or anything like that because they're, they're dry. Now this is a, a, um, a Folgers, just an old coffee thing. And I save these because they make really nice canisters. They're really nice and sturdy, and their tops are nice. So I have a bunch of these uh, in the garage. You can even plant things in them. You can spray paint them and, and make a set of canisters for yourself. But, uh, yeah, so there we go. I still have a few more to do. But... Uh, easy. It's real easy and it's a nice cheap fertilizer. It gives your plants lots of calcium. Tomatoes love this. Uh, anything that uh, is a heavy feeder likes this. So okay, uh, I'm going to finish this up and get ready and go in the garden. Okay, let's go take a look in my garden and see what needs to be done. Oh my. So much needs to be cleaned up here. Um, I have to do something with all this over here. I'm thinking about extending my fencing around here because the dogs always dig under that box because chipmunks and things run in there. So, um, yep, I need to do that. These all need to be moved, and I have some, I think it's pak choy, that sort of planted itself here. Um, I had put, uh, I had let some uh, plants go to seed, and I just had them laying on here for a few days, and this is the result, so I'm happy about that, because uh, Pak Choi is in the Brassica family, and hopefully I'll keep it for a while, and I'm going to see if I put a little greenhouse cover over it, how it'll do. So, um, yeah, I really, really need to get in here. We put these stones on here, but I think I want to move those because I have all these that I want to put back down. So I think I'm going to put these over here and use these as a border to kind of keep this mulch in. 
So, um, yeah, the garden is still doing okay. I have a few things that I can pick. I don't think the tomatoes are going to get ripe anymore. Uh, not unless we have a warm spell, but the days are getting too short. So I'm going to change a lot of things next year. Um, this year I planted late because it was so doggone cold here. So I think that's why everything here is, is late. Otherwise I would have had more in the way of crops. So um, all that needs to be done, Those the stone work. I need to um, mulch all this area here. Um, so when my son comes over, he'll help me with the rest of the mulch. I need to pull out all those dead flowers and uh, move those uh, raised bed boxes over here because there's more sun. I like the way this little corner here looks with just the plants and I think I'm going to just keep it as as a decorative area here but I need to move this stuff and the chairs and keep this just for my raised beds and I need to move this fence out here so that's pretty much the plan I was going to move these but I think I'm going to leave them for now because this does get sun now and the parsley is going really well and the basil is too. It wasn't doing anything before. But I'm not sure. I think I'm just going to plant flowers in here next year. And like I said, I think I'm going to go with begonias instead of impatience because the impatience are so ugly and the begonias are still beautiful. So, all right, that's pretty much the before of my garden. Um, and then I'm going to have to start pulling things out soon. But I'll wait until after the frost. Who knows when that'll be. But this is my food forest. And I'm happy with it. And I'll be even happier with it next year. Because the trees are gone. Okay. move to back here. We mulched a bunch more stuff. Still a bunch of mulch here, but I want to use this mulch over here for my garden where Chloe is there because that fence needs to come down so I can put it up again. So it's still a mess, but we got all the mulch moved. So that was my main priority. And then the other priority I had was uh, my boxes that were over here, my raised boxes, are now living happily over here. And that's perfect because this is a very sunny spot. So still lots of work to do, but I'm very happy and very thankful that my son came over and uh, helped me out. Actually, he did all the work. I just kind of supervised. All right. Well, I'm going to go in and put my feet up a little bit. And I want to get rid of a lot of these pots and only keep certain ones because it's just all too much for me. So, okay, I will see, see dinner. Oh, my grandson went shopping, so he put stuff in here too so some of it's mine some of it's his but I'm just going to go for my things so in here I have this vegan uh, feta just a little bit left um, I have some mushrooms and a little tiny bit of potato salad in there but that's not what I'm after 
I'm after this. These are the veggies I cooked up the other day, and I'm cooking some pasta. So that's enough actually for a few meals. Um, and this will go back in. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to get some butter too. Um, all right. I will meet you at the stove. Hey, I have some spinach pasta here that I cooked. I just cooked it. And then I have my veggies that I cooked the other day. If you want to see that recipe, it's uh, in another video. So I'm going to put half of this in with my pasta. The other half I'm going to have for another meal. I don't know, maybe with rice or potatoes. I'm not sure. So I'm going to put the sauce in here. And these vegetables taste really, really delicious. All right, I'm going to heat this up on the on the stove here now because I didn't want to heat up everything. So I'm just going to let that cook for a little bit. And actually, this looks like it's enough for two meals, too. So I probably have enough uh, vegetables and things for four meals here. But I'm going to let this cook a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more butter. This is vegan butter. Use whatever butter you have, whatever butter you like. So that'll make it a little saucier. So I'm going to let this heat up for a minute. All right, this recipe calls for red pepper flakes. That's got too much heat for me, so I'm just going to add some pepper. I like regular pepper, but I don't like red pepper flakes a whole lot. And that's it. Quick and easy dinner. You can use whatever pasta you like. Um, the recipe... Um, actually had linguine, but I thought this would be good. So, I'm going to give this a taste. See if it's warmed up. Mmm, good. I'll get a plate. Okay, so I have my food dished out. And I have this feta cheese. It's, it's plant-based from Aldi's. And there's still a little bit left. I probably won't use it all up. But I'm going to top it with some of this feta. I'll save the rest for the, the rest of the pasta. And then it says to top with parsley. So I have fresh parsley from my garden. Just picked this morning. So that should be good. All right. I'm going to top it with some parsley, a little freshness. And a nice salad would be nice with this, but I'm going to be full after I eat this. You can save the parsley stems uh, and dehydrate dehydrate them if you want to for flavor because
they have just as much flavor as the leaves, I think. So, okay. There is my delicious dinner. this camera up a little bit. There we go. All right. Dinner day 277. Smile. All right. I'm going to eat this and I'm going to like it. And that's about all I have for you today, my friends. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.